Hi everybody, this is Bentley the Compost Guy Christy here and I'm standing in front of a tray that contains some gravel that used to be in my vermiponics system. Some of you may have watched my video that featured my system. This is the reservoir and you can see that this uh, pump is getting a little clogged up. But I decided to take down my system. It's sort of run its course and yeah, time to start focusing on a larger outdoor system that I'm going to be putting together over the next couple months. But, yeah, I wanted to shoot a video. As you can see, I have filled up this bin right here. This is actually the bed that I used for the system. And I've been filling it with the gravel that was dumped out of it. And basically what I've been doing is working down this material you know, closer and closer to the tray in an effort to sort of get some sense of the quantity of worms that were in this in this bed. Now I'm going to be making another video, more of a slideshow type of video that's just a sort of overall summary of all of this and I'll show the other pictures of, uh, I'll show some pictures of the system you know towards the end, how the plants looked and this sort of stuff. But this is basically just sort of a live action video just to sort of show the process as I uh, as I reduce down this gravel. Now one thing to mention right off the bat, I cannot believe the density of worm cocoons that is in this grow bed material. And you're not gonna be able to really see them unfortunately, but you know it has me wishing that I had uh, been doing this during the times that I set up my various uh, 50 cocoon challenge uh, experiments because I've always had to work a bit to try to track down my 50 cocoons or at least a lot of the time I have and this gravel it just, I can't believe how many cocoons are in here now I almost have to wonder if some of the cocoons were laid down even after I dumped this gravel into this tray because red worms or composting worms in general you know they're well adapted for life in a rapidly changing environment and one of the strategies of course is to start laying cocoons and probably at a more rapid rate when the going gets tough because if, if things go south things get really 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 uh, bad obviously they're gonna want to guarantee their the, the future success of the population you know if all the adults die off they'll still have a lot of these cocoons left so this is just me uh, you know theorizing here I have no idea if this is what's happened what I do know is this bed it was it did very very well in terms of uh, of uh, providing a good habitat for these worms. You know, I didn't add very many worms when I started. Essentially all I did was <clears throat> add some compost material that happened to have some worms in it. My goal wasn't to add say you know a half pound of worms or a pound of worms or anything like that. I just wanted to add some worms and then sort of see what they did. And I can't remember exactly when I started this experiment I believe it was back in February, and it's now at the end of March. I think it's been a couple months anyway, and it, and it did work out quite well. But you can see we're getting right down to the bottom, and like I said, I mean, just it's almost like as the closer we get to the worms, the more of these cocoons I'm seeing. I'm just gonna start to. Now you can see that right down at the bottom is just with uh, some of these red wigglers. Now interestingly enough, while this bed is you know phenomenal, pretty well ultimate habitat of composting worms because it's, it's soaking wet yet provides the oxygenation from the, uh, the liquid moving down through it and the, the pore space and everything else. But interestingly enough, there aren't any really big worms here. 
that's sort of a fascinating, look at that, look at that go. That's one of the fascinating things about this, is that, that I'm not seeing any actual jumbo sized worms. And I'm not 100% sure why that is. You know, typically it's it's moisture content, which is obviously not an issue here. So the only other thing I can imagine is just just the uh, nutritional value of of the material they had in the bed. And there was a lot of, of carbon-rich materials. You know, aside from the gravel, I had shredded cardboard, so that could help to explain it. You know, I didn't have manure or anything in this grow bed, but it's just it's find that really really interesting. Anyway, as you can see, now I know a lot of you, you obviously don't know how many worms I added to start with, but trust me when I say that the worm population has increased by leaps and bounds just in the uh, span of time that I had this vermiponic system up and running. So I cannot wait to get my large scale outdoor system up and running uh, hopefully once the weather gets a bit a bit nicer around here and yeah it's gonna be really really interesting to see how the plants grow and to see what sort of a worm population I can produce in uh, that outdoor system all right so thanks for tuning in uh, once again once again this is Bentley the compost guy Christy and yeah we'll talk to you again soon